This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, this is the third lecture on Chapter 24 on Variance Analysis. I remember in the first lecture, we did the flexed budget, which is on the screen now, uh, and looked at the total variances. In the second lecture, I went through and analysed the standard analysis required for the exam uh, for each of the materials, the labour and the variable overhead variances. Uh, in this lecture, we're going to look at the fixed overhead variance, which is, as you'll see, a little bit strange, but perhaps requires a bit more learning. Can I stress again, as I've done several times, that at the moment we're looking at absorption costing. And because it was absorption costing, we effectively flexed the um, fixed overheads. You know, because we were saying, oh, the profit is supposed to be $7 a unit, that effectively meant the fixed overheads were $15 a unit. So we had flexed them, even though really they should have stayed at the original 130,500, fixed overheads shouldn't change at all. But thanks to this flexing business, we've ended up having to explain a difference of 574. And watch what we do. Part of it, I think, is very easy and very obvious. This is fixed overheads. And remember the total variance we're trying to explain uh, was that 574 that we had in our statement, which I can't remember, was it adverse? Oh, sorry about this, yes. All right, when we come to analyze it, First of all, we have the expenditure variance. And the expenditure, I think, is extremely logical because we compare the actual total fixed overheads, which from the question at the very bottom, 134,074. And as I said a minute ago, total fixed overhead shouldn't change, whether you produce more, whether you produce less. So we compare with the original budget total. And if you look back, the original budget, We'd budgeted on spending 130,500. Now, I'm sorry about this up and down, but I've not much choice here. And so, whatever else happened, we should have spent 130,500. We've actually spent 134,074. Something's gone wrong. We've overspent the difference. A three five seven four. We've overspent. That on its own would reduce the profit. But why was our variance on the uh, effects budget statement only five seven four? It's because in arriving at the flexed profit, we'd absorbed the overheads at fifteen dollars a unit for every unit actually produced. And because we'd produced more units, we'd ended up charging more fixed overheads. It was a problem we had when we had the absorption costing lecture ages ago. And so that's what's created, if you like, the difference. And so this, in some ways, is almost a cheat. To explain that, we have what we call the volume variance. And the volume variance, we compare our actual production which in units is 8,900 
with the budget production. Uh, which was 8,700 units. We'd produced 200 units more than we expected. And therefore, because it was absorption costing, we charged 200 units more fixed overheads than we should have done. And what's the effect of charging 200 more fixed overheads than we should have done? Well, at standard cost per unit, for fixed overheads, which was 15. It meant in arriving at our flexed profit, we charged 3,000 more than we should have done. And just look back. Ah, sorry, going up and down again. But look back. That's exactly what had happened. By absorbing 15 for every unit produced, we've ended up charging 3,000 too much. The real profit, we should have charged less and therefore had more profit. This is favourable. And of course the two together do work. 3574 adverse and 3000 favourable does explain the total of 574 adverse. Um, now, before I carry on, just one thing about that volume variance. It's easy to learn a rule and get the figure of 3000, but of all the variances, this is the one that for most people, they then start scratching their heads about, oh, is it favourable, is it adverse? You know, all the others you can make silly mistakes on, but all the others, if you think it through, it's logical. You've spent more adverse, you've spent less favourable. This one's not as obvious. And so that, although I have told you the real reason that if you produce more, you've charged too much, you should have charged less, which means the profit will be more, I don't know, thinking it through in an exam, well, for me, I find a problem. And so the way I remember, which is a bit of a cheat, but it always works, I say, ah, we've produced more. I say, oh, if we produce more, that's good. And therefore, the variance is favourable. Whereas, if we'd produce less, I say, oh, producing less is bad, and it would be adverse. Here, we had produced more. It's good, it's favourable. Now, I say that's a, a little bit of a cheap way of looking at it, but it always works. And I think, you may be different, but I think it's quicker than thinking through the logic, you know, and getting it that way. However, although I'd love to finish there, I'm afraid I can't. Because you could be required to analyse that volume variance. Effectively to say, why did we produce more? Now what's coming in some ways is a little bit silly, I don't know. But the thing is, why did we produce 3,000 more units? The obvious reason uh, stands to be because uh, we, we thought we could sell more. But there are lots of reasons it could have happened. And one reason could have been this. Maybe when we did the original cost cards uh, and the original budgets, maybe we thought we'd only enough labour to produce 8,700 units. I said there could have been lots of reasons, but that's possible. That maybe we thought there was a limited amount of labour and we were only capable of producing 8,700. And if that was the case, how have we managed to produce more? If labour is the limit, if we're li limited by the labour available,
Well, how can you produce more units? There are only two ways. Either you produce faster, because if the workers work faster, then even with the same amount of labour, they can produce more units. Or you get more labour. Because, of course, if you manage to get more labour, then we can produce more units. And so the exam can ask you to calculate the effect. You know, we know here that we produced 200 more units, but they can ask you to calculate how much of that was because they worked faster, and that we call the efficiency variance. Efficiency. Or how much of it was because we get more labour and if we manage to get more labour, we call that the capacity variance. And so let's look at those and let's see how did we manage to get 200 more units and therefore save 3,000? Was it because we got more labour? Or was it because they worked faster? Or was it a combination of the two? Let's look first of all at the efficiency variance. Now, in fact, we've already done this twice. If you remember, when we did the uh, labour variances, we did check, did they work faster or slower? When we did the variable overheads variances, we checked, did they work faster or slower? In any exactly the same way, we'll do it for um, fixed overheads. We compare the actual hours worked Uh, look back at the question, they actually worked 44,100. To check whether they worked faster or slower, we compare with the standard hours for the actual production. They produced 8,900. They should have taken five hours a unit. Uh, and so, they should have worked 44,500 hours. Uh, they have worked faster, we've saved 400 hours. Uh, and if you do look back later, labour, we got this saved 400 hours. For labour, it was saving them at $5 an hour. For variable overhead sufficiency variance, uh, we'd save 400 hours, and that saved us at $2 an hour. Well, for fixed overheads, they've worked 400 hours faster. Um, that saves us at the standard cost per hour. The standard cost per hour uh, for fixed overheads is $3. That saves us 1200 it's favourable. All right, that's the efficiency. The other one, though, was capacity. Did we get more labour or less labour than we budgeted on? If we get more labour, we can produce more. If we get less labour, we can produce less. And so, for capacity variance, We say, how much labour did we get? The actual hours worked? 44,100, I should remember it by now. I want to know if we got more hours or less hours than what we budgeted on. We compare it with the original budget hours. And how many hours have we budgeted on having? Remember, the original budget 
uh, was on producing 8,700 units. The original budget assumed it would be five hours a unit. And therefore, we budgeted on having 43,500 hours available. So that's how many hours we think we'd have, or we thought we'd have. We actually got more hours. We got an extra 600 hours. And if we've more hours, we can produce more. And how much does that benefit us? Well, at standard cost per hour. The fixed overhead is three dollars. That benefits us 1800. Again, more labour, we can produce more, that's good. No, it's favourable. So it is messy, I'm afraid. Um, it's very much learning the rules. But just so there's no confusion, if I summarise efficiency, is 1,200 favourable. Uh, capacity is 1,800 favourable. So the two together is the volume variance. We'd worked that out earlier. Uh, the exam made a session for the volume variance, fine, it's 3,000 favourable. But you could be asked for either or both efficiency and capacity. Uh, in addition, of course, we have the expenditure variance, which was 3574 adverse, if you look back. Uh, the total, therefore, 574 adverse. Okay, so there we are. We've done uh, all the analysis of the cost variances. But we're still not quite there, so I'm afraid there's another two lectures coming.